Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Within Fender's history, there's one model that I've always wanted to try, and that's these goofy looking hollow bodies, known as the Coronado series. There were a few different models. You can find the Coronado 1 with just a neck pickup, and then a few different variations within the Coronado 2 series. But these goofy things were around from 1966 until about 1972. I've always been quite partial to the Wildwood series, and I've been looking a long time for a particularly nice looking one because they're all just a little bit different due to the unique way that they injected the trees with the dye. And besides the Wildwood variations, I've always been attracted to the Antigua finish. I'm not enough of a Fender historian to be able to say for 100% certainty that yes, this is the first time that the Antigua finish was used, but I do believe that might be accurate. And this was later used in the 70s on some Stratocasters and Telecasters and a few other things. But my friends, one of these beautiful things has met a mysterious fate. Check out this eBay listing that showed up a couple of weeks ago. We've got one of these Coronado 2s in the beautiful Antigua finish that has been extensively modified. This was originally listed for $1,000 and it was an open auction. I was all excited to pick this thing up for around this much, but somebody messaged the seller and closed the deal apparently for $1,500 bypassing the whole auction. But here's what the seller said. The condition is for parts are not working. He's not sure if it was a project guitar or some sort of a test guitar, but it seems there has been a lot of work done to this thing. And apparently he's a secondhand licensed dealer. I'm not quite sure what that means. So at first I see, okay, we're missing our trem system, we're missing our bridge, but everything else seems to kind of be there, like maybe we just need to replace a few parts. But then as you scroll through, okay, they're actually there. That's not too bad of a project, right? We just got a whole bunch of dip switches installed on our bout right here. Looks like we even have some sort of switches on our Antigua pickguard there. All right, our finish has definitely aged a little bit. Our headstock is looking okay. Looks like we're missing a small part of this tuner, but that shouldn't be too hard to replace. But then you see it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That, that's a lot of stuff to throw into a hollow body guitar, that's for sure. <laughs> So remember these little dongles up here? That's what those are controlling all within here. You can see all those capacitors on this thing. And if it's for parts, who knows if any of this stuff actually works. I'm sure that'd be a nightmare to diagnose which little trace is not working properly anymore or having to replace every single one of these things. Within the Gibson realm of things, you could check out like the Artist series. A lot of people have suggested that perhaps those guitars sounded better back in the day because the caps and resistors were fresh. And as they've aged, these past 50 some years they just don't sound as good as they once were so i think that would be a fun project one day to get one of those and have somebody redo the board but i'm guessing that this would be pretty similar to this because this is kind of like a precursor to all this stuff what do i think all of this is i think this is an experimental guitar organ or guitar organ however you want to pronounce it Around the same time that the Coronado was being done, Vox did up a Gatorgan like this. Now this isn't exactly quite the same, it just looks more like a hunk of wood that has a giant pick guard on it. I honestly don't know too much about these things. The first time that I was turned on to these guitar organs was actually when I did that collection video of Mr. David Gilmore's auction guitars. So you can find some that kind of look like this that have a whole bunch of effects built into them. But the ones that I really like are things like this, where it's an ES styled instrument that just has all of these switches and knobs on it. It's a little bit ridiculous looking, but these are very fascinating guitars. So you're probably like, okay, what's a guitar organ even do, Trogly? Okay, it does this. So it can accompany you while you're playing guitar with a little organ in the background if you're doing some chords, or it can double up your leads to give you that really 60s iconic sound, or different models will do different things, but you can do a whole bunch of stuff with them. It seems to me anyways that these were the very beginnings of turning your guitar into something else. Like later on you could find the MIDI pickups that you would install on a guitar to do something very similar without cramming all of that stuff in your guitar. 
I'm sure it'd be fascinating to toy around with one of these things, but they are rather expensive. Like this guy was 5,000. The bigger bodied ones, people are asking quite a bit right here. But hey, check out this one. It's like a long-eared 335. It's got a whole bunch of slider switches right here too. And look at all those effects and stuff that you can do here. So now that we know that those things exist, I mean, this is what that guitar originally looked like. I'm curious if this is not just some guy's hacked up prototype thing that he decided, hey, I'm gonna take the guitars out of this guitar and put it in here and make myself a Fender Coronado guitar again. What if this was an experimental prototype? I don't really know enough about Fender history to be able to dive into this to figure it out. Obviously, we've got some chipped paint here, which isn't looking too good if it was factory cut or anything like that, but it's also a very old instrument. The plexiglass plate here isn't the most professional, but then again, when you go to the backside of one of these things, this is what those looked like. Not that much better. Although now comparing those, this does not have any like recessed routes. It looks like they just drilled it into the back. So the odds of this actually being an experimental prototype no, but I really wanted it to, right? I was definitely willing to pay like 12 to 1500 bucks for this thing because I thought it'd be a fun like restoration project here. And hey, worst case scenario, I, I suppose we could have at least patched up some of these holes and whatnot and just turned it into a regular Coronado because that's the fun thing. Apparently some of these Antigua finished ones, if you take the finish off of them, sometimes you can find wildwood hiding underneath it. So even if this didn't work out, maybe just maybe on the inside, I could have saw if it was something good and then <laughs> like restored. So I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on that. But one of these Coronados is a Gatorgan. I think it works great. But hey, we're not done talking about weird, goofy guitars today that I don't know a lot about. Let's check this thing out. A Supertron Double Neck Guitar Mando 1961 Red Burst. I believe Reverb shared this on their Instagram and that's how I found this thing. Doesn't that look so sweet? It's so evil looking with these sound holes. They're almost like really curved teeth or something. And then you've got this little mouth right here, so it's like super acoustic. But then the double neck is actually joined together going on here. So this has a lot of influences. It reminds me of those really cheap guitars that we see at Goodwill all the time. They look really cool, but in reality, they don't play all that well. You guys remember my satin arterial burst guitar? A lot of guys were saying, hey, yeah, that reminds me of a cheap guitar. Yeah, they're probably talking about something like this. Now, obviously, this is not a cheap guitar, but it's the vibes we're talking about here. But then we have some harp guitar-like vibes. You know, these old Gibson ones, how they're kind of connected there? That's kind of what they're doing here. But how many strings do we have over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That likely means it's a mandolin. I mean, you can also get that from Mando over here. But it looks like it's not fully strung up. So somebody wanted it to only be a four-string mandolin on this setup. But then over here, it appears to be a six-string guitar. Now the fretboard gives me the same vibes as the rest of this instrument does, but they're asking so much for it, it must be ultra rare, or maybe it plays better than it looks. But it's certainly an interesting blast from the past. Like right here, you have this metal box on top of the whole thing. Looks like maybe a volume and tone control, and then maybe your neck selector right there. And they do indeed have pickups on here. So that's fascinating how they have that mounted into the guitar, not necessarily floating. Then they probably just have some wires going through there until it eventually gets here. And then you get onto the back. This thing was well kept doesn't have a whole bunch of nicks dings and gouges it's completely bound you got that really cool arterial burst finish and i'm just now noticing this that streak that we were seeing earlier on the fretboard that appears to be like a finish like they were silver bursting the neck <laughs> What a cool old guitar. It's got the vibes, that's for sure, and it appears to have been well kept. Mandolin and guitar combined. So that's at John's Gear Bazaar. It looks like he might have purchased it from Rock and Roll Vintage a while ago. And to end things off today, I have this Les Paul Gold Top. A little bit more traditional of a topic, but what on earth happened to this thing? Is this a bad relic job? Nah, generally when you see finish flaking away like this, that has to be something to do with water damage or a guitar that has been exposed to extreme moisture for an extended period of time. So this poor thing, it appears to have been upgraded bridge-wise. I believe that's a Faber if I remember correctly, but the finish is just all flaking off. You probably wouldn't be able to gig this thing for too much longer before it just becomes a natural top. It almost looks like it's been refretted, but they might've kept the fret nibs. Those are giant looking frets in that particular angle. 
But then we see somebody has put a compensated nut in here. Those things always look cool. But you can see our finish has not fared too well up here either. That almost looks like it was in a fire. A fire and a flood? What an unlucky guitar. So going through the rest of these photos here, it appears it's a 1995 Les Paul Classic. And somebody's kind of sanded the finish off the back of the neck. I mean, it'd probably make sense if it was also flaking off to do that. So when I read this guy's title of Heavy Age 1995 Gold Top, I was like, oh man, please. Please, Jay, don't tell me you're trying to sell this as a relic job. <laughs> but no, thankfully he is an honest seller. He tells you what's up here. The guitar suffered some humidity damage. Yep, just like I was thinking, that had to have been extreme. Like we're talking being locked in a basement for extended periods of time with standing water. Thankfully, at least from the photos anyways, it does not look like we have any swelling of the wood. Like sometimes if a guitar is in a flood or something, you'll definitely see it on the bottom if it was standing up, how the water would get absorbed. Early Les Paul classics are looked for, but it's not part of the very early years, so this is just a regular classic. Will he get his price? I think that might be pushing it. But for anybody who wants a project, this could be a potential, you know, refinish candidate to do an interesting finish, but... Looking at this, it almost looks like maybe we have some cracks in the top, but it's really too hard to tell. You'll have to ask the seller. Maybe you can get some more information on this guitar's history as well. What kind of conditions it was left in to get into this. But as far as like the finish checking, that looks great. I mean, maybe you just take this and have somebody shoot a light clear coat over it so it doesn't continue to flake off. Or maybe you just want to play it as is. I'm not here to judge. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out these interesting finds with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.